All right, comic fam, let's chat about some real first appearances. Ryan, it's been a minute since we chatted about this. It's uh, been many more minutes since I chatted about it too. Hit the subscribe button, comic fam. We talk about collectible comics and we like to dive deep. You know, we like to go backwards in time, trying to figure out really these these moments in comic history. How far back do they go with characters? Because there's a a thing that happens in comic books. There's typically teasers. There's things that allude to the next issue. And it makes these types of statements of when's the first time this happened, you know, kind of have some, best way to put it, options. Sometimes there's very clear cut. This person appeared first right here. Other times it's not that clear. And I think this is one of those second times. All right, Batman Beyond. Let's talk about Terry McGinnis. Back in 1999, this animation that linked to the BTOS universe, the Batman the Animated Series universe on television, it was a huge hit. And they brought a short six issues to the market post the success of this show. And it made the debut of the Terry McGinnis Batman, this futuristic Batman, happen in the pages of the comics for the first time. Right. He was a popular TV show character, so they wanted to transfer that popularity over to comic books by just a, a little miniseries, just to test the waters, see how Terry McGinnis does on paper. And yeah, and it worked out pretty well. It was like a rendition of the show, similar to how uh, Harley Quinn was introduced, right? I mean, it's I kind of a, a similar key situation here. However, this right here would mark the first appearance of Terry McGinnis. It would also mark first appearance in costume in the Batman Beyond costume that is in the second issue of this series because we'll remind everybody like that origin story features Bruce Wayne in the costume. Right, yeah. The first issue, it doesn't have Terry McGinnis dressed up as Batman Beyond. Spoiler alert. No, it's all, it's all Bruce Wayne and it's it's kind of giving the reader like you know a little bit of understanding as to what's going on. Why are we in the future? You know, why is Batman old? So we have now this thing that takes place in, in, in comics and collecting. We have an animated series rendition in comics and then we have the key worthiness of when this character gets adapted in DC continuity into like the comic book world. And why would someone care about that? Because that's when that's where like the real stuff happens. Like the animated universe is its own little separate continuity, kind of like the Marvel Ultimate Universe back in the day. Like there's the mainstream comic book universe where all of the main things are happening. And then you know, almost like a, like an like an Elseworlds kind of way. There's just stuff that happens on the periphery that doesn't usually apply or matter in a sense. So they had to bring Terry McGinnis and Batman Beyond over into the the mainstream continuity here. So now we're gonna fast forward what eleven years? Superman, Batman, Annual Number Four. It's like a one shot story. It's it's like own standalone tale that features Batman Beyond. Like these are the pages of. Batman Beyond, but this is different, all right? This is such a long time after, and it's not the animated world. Let me read you the first page of this story. Please. The very bottom of the first page, it says, A Visit to the World of Batman Beyond. I mean, it's very clear there in text that we are getting a unique story that features Terry McGinnis that is being mentored by a Bruce Wayne. This right here predates Batman 700, thus making it the first time we see Terry McGinnis in this similar origin story that we all know outside of the animated series. Cool. What's the problem then? Well, the problem is that between the animated series and this issue, Batman Beyond shows up in comic books. Yeah. All right, see, and now it's going to get a little dicey. Yeah. Okay, but let's take it back. When does it happen the first time? So you have to go back to 2005 in this the same comic book run, this Superman, Batman, but we're going back to issue 22 and issue 23, 2005. A beautiful time. That's right. Issue 22, we see a cameo appearance, and issue 23, we see full-on appearance of Batman Beyond. It is in costume. It's the right symbol. It's Batman from the future. This is a story, though, however, that goes out of its way to name the character. And why is that very important? Because the name that this Batman is called is Tim. Ooh, Tim. And and that would make sense because, mind you, Tim Drake was Robin at the time. But this 
name makes a very, very big difference to collectors because that means that this key appearance is standalone for maybe a Batman Beyond key moment, not the Terry McGinnis Batman Beyond full appearance, which really is what matters the most because that character is the character that holds that Batman Beyond mantle, similar to a Peter Parker holding the Spider-Man mantle. Is it kind of like a Barry Allen or like a Wally West? Like two different flashes? Exactly. Like, like it matters for that particular character and that superhero that they become. So this is like a separate, completely different version of Batman Beyond that is a future version of Tim Drake and not this completely new Terry McGinnis character that they came up with. Correct. And where it gets even more interesting is that in the last decade, there are rumors on the internet that this was a mistake. There's actually a, f a huge thread on CGC, like their, their forms, where it says that there has been someone who witnessed a quote during a panel in 2007 that they said that this was a mistake, that they didn't mean to say Tim in that bubble. I was supposed to say Terry. So there is this kind of movement happening that's like, hey, should this be the case if it was done in error? Now, I found it pretty fun because Nick from Key Collector actually was able to source DC Direct, like this toy line that was released post this series, specifically in like this 2005 run here, um, this short appearance of Batman Beyond. And the toy run indeed was named a Tim Drake Batman Beyond. Hmm. So it kind of like further gives it credence that it wasn't a mistake or if it was at the very least, they rolled with it. Or if it was a mistake, they made the mistake twice in the same way. And I also found some more information too because th because it's been so long and there's been a lot of conversations about this, there's multiple websites that actually credit a Terry McGinnis appearance. Some don't. Some say it's Tim Drake because really collectors are the ones that care the most and this is some, like, some deep cut kind of stuff. But I was able to find a wiki entry about this rumor and there's like a really nice list of the notes from this entire panel back in 2007. It's not very common that you get this type of uh, documentation for a one-off panel at a WonderCon. And the only time that the words Terry McGinnis even shows up in this transcript, it wasn't to talk about the error they made. You'd think that would make the transcript. No. The only thing it says is, Didio hinted that Terry McGinnis from Batman Beyond might be showing up in the future. That's pretty generic. Right. Generic yeah. and has nothing to do with the fact that, oh, we already brought him into the world. Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't feel like it was a mistake to me, but that's just me. So we have issues 22 and 23. Batman Beyond Key? Sure. Terry McGinnis as Batman Beyond full appearance? Not so much. And then we also have another comic book that actually has to make its way in like in between this narrative that we're laying out for the community. Cause just in a couple of years, we have countdown final crisis issue number 21. We have straight up cameo shots. So in between the Superman, Batman issues 22 and 23 in 2005 and the annual number four in 2010, there was a, another, another issue here in 2007, this countdown to infinite crisis 21, which gets, you know, th th these are all pretty weird and like multiverse-y, but this one starts to develop Earth-12, which is a side universe where everything is just 50 years in the future. So they're in Earth-12 in this, in this issue, and they happen to glimpse Batman Beyond. And what's very fun is that they go out of their way to have a conversation amongst, amongst characters speculating who's beneath the mask. And they say this, is it Tim or is it Dick? They don't say Terry. Terry's not part of this conversation. They guess, you know, but they don't know. We don't get clarification. That's very important because we don't know who this Batman Beyond actually was in these pages. Mind you, this has a October date on the cover and the date of the 2007 WonderCon that we are discussing in this conversation happened in March that very year. Maybe this was the appearance that was being discussed. I don't know, but we wouldn't see Batman Beyond until the pages of the annual 
a near five years later. Wow. It's weird how something like and like a like a typo or like an error can kind of spark such a debate like this over a first appearance. Uh, it really does. And people get heated about it. People want to know where they should be putting their money as it pertains to speculation. But it goes even deeper when it comes to you no, know, like what should be the comic that holds the most key worthiness. There's almost like a pride in having the answer right that some collectors who aren't even collecting Batman Beyond, like they won't even care about this issue, but they feel it like needing to be correct so much that it actually causes like some divisiveness in the community, you know, some separation, some frustrated people. Yeah, people don't like to be wrong. You know, it's not a good feeling. So that's why we got to go by dates, man. The obvious answer, I think, is if they're going to do like a Batman Beyond featured film at some point, they're going to do Terry McGinnis as as the character. Right. They're going to want to make it simple and not, and not have to explain Tim Drake or, or who that is. Like the average movie goer doesn't even know who Tim Drake is. So I don't know. Terry, Terry McGinnis, it makes the most sense. And that's kind of like why I think it's important that we even have a conversation like this in the first place. Doesn't that make sense? Like you have people who are looking at comic books literally with pages of Batman Beyond in them five years prior to what most collectors say is a full first appearance. And they're going, yeah, doesn't matter to me. Like there's that, that raises questions. It makes you go, wait, what's going on? And that's why these terms and why these things in particular matter. 